Winnie, I hope you are there for the welcome remarks. Thank you. The welcome remarks presented by Ms. Winnie on behalf of the chairperson, I Assist Africa chapter. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Deton. Uh, thank you so much, our presenters, uh, who have accepted to share with us their wealth of knowledge with us today. Uh, on behalf of I Assist Africa chapter, and I assist Global would like to uh, warmly welcome you to our very first webinar uh, this year, uh, focusing on research data management and sustainable development. Uh, one of the key goals of IASIS is capacity development and sharing knowledge and uh, networking. So we take this very seriously. Um, that's why we engage every quarter uh, with different topics uh, for us to share um, information, knowledge regarding data management, uh, focusing on the Africa, the African issues. As the, the chapter, we do have workshops that are conducted every every year. This year we are planning to have one in Kenya, uh, waiting approvals from the Parliament of Kenya, which will be hosting. Uh, we have an annual global conference. Uh, this year our annual global conference is in Canada, and I assist Global has been able to. Uh, provide fellowships to two participants, one from Kenya and one from Uganda. We'll be able to share, to, uh, to share with you the experiences uh, in due course. Uh, we are hoping the next workshop or the next conference uh, will be in somewhere in London. So we need to to start planning and participate accordingly. Uh, we welcome the speakers, as you can see on the program. The focus in research data management and the SDGs. The speakers of our expertise, our expert, expert, experts in this field. And I know by the time we end this webinar, we shall have gained a lot uh, from them. I encourage all of us to, uh, to ask questions. Uh, we also have a presentation from our managing director of the I, I Assist IQ for those who uh, want to know more about publishing in the I Assist IQ. So I look forward to everyone's participation and uh, Maybe we shall physically meet uh, one day. Uh, thank you so much. I wish you great deliberations. Over to you, Dr. Deton. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Winnie uh, Kulu. Yes, I'll call you Dr. already. <laughs> Please, a round of applause for uh, Ms. Winnie for that um, great introduction to our uh, uh, as an organization, I assist. And so without um, wasting too much time, I would be introducing we have Ramogula, Ramogula. Pardon me if I have not said that correctly. Um, Ms. Rosina Ramogola is a data curation officer under the Scholarly Communications Unit in the Department of Library Services at the University of Pretoria. She is responsible for research data management. She also manages and administers the University of Pretoria Research Data Repository Figshare. She is involved in open science at the University of Pretoria. 
She is part of IGAP RDM committee. She holds a master's oh. degree from the University of and has been Lord. with the Department of Library oh, Service for a decade. Lord. Lord. Active Lord, member of the Network of Data and Information Curation Com Communities, NEDIC, and Library Carpentries. She is also involved in AI and innovation in libraries. She is passionate about new trends in libraries, particularly those that change library operations. And therefore, with a round of applause, kindly welcome Ms. Rosina Ramogola. Thank you. Over to you, Rosina. Rosina, kindly unmute yourself and proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Thank you. Am I audible enough? Yes, you are. Thank you so much for nice introduction don't worry about the same name i understand <laughs> okay yes this Ramona, don't worry about it um, as doctor already introduced me my name is rosina and i'm from south africa capital city Miss Rosina, kindly unmute yourself, please. All other participants, please mute oh, yourself. Sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I had to mute everybody. You mute me. All right. You mute yourself. So please just rewind a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Rosina, as Dr. have already introduced me. I am based in South Africa capital city of South Africa, Pretoria. So that's where University of Pretoria is based and that's where I am working currently. So today we're going to unpack um, research data management and how University of Pretoria embedded sustainable development goals in their uh, repositories. So the title of the presentation is SDGs embedded on the institutional data repository, research data management envisaged. That is, that's a question. So this is my presentation layout. Briefly, I'm going to talk about what is research data management. Can you see me now? Yes, we can. Yes, because I just opened my video. They were just saying, please open your video so that we see you. So this is me. <laughs> so um, I'm going to speak about what is research data management, um, how we embedded this SDGs or sustainable development goals in our- uh, Please, uh, sorry, on the- on the security, can you disable the whiteboard so that nobody tempers around like writing, like what has been done just now? Click security, okay, go to security. whiteboard. Oh, okay. And then disable whiteboard. Where's my whiteboard, whiteboard, whiteboard? It's written on the list. I see. 
Oh, sh I see share whiteboards. So I must en disable this one. Disable. Uh -huh. All right. Sorry about that. At least I learned something today. Thank you so much. Yes, learning doesn't stop. So this is my presentation layout. Um, we're going to talk about the sustainable development goals, the data repository, the fixture, institutional repository, and how we embedded the SDGs in our repositories. So what is research data management? And I think to those who normally attend their data sessions or the data national weeks or the international data week, uh, they heard about this before to say data is a, is a new gold. So most that attend in agriculture, they say data is a new production. So basically it's a new currency if you are working in um, data world. So we're living in data world because it's produced every day. So what is research data management? Research data management basically is the careful handling of the data from the start of the project till the end of the project. So the active data should be managed throughout its life cycle. So we cannot talk about research data management without talking about the research life cycle. Hence, I gave, I indicated this research data life cycle. So basically talking about the data cre uh, creation, how to manage the data till you deposit it, you archive it, or you share it, and you preserve it. So the planning and design, the collection, how you're going to capture your data, how you're going to put the metadata to it, because metadata management is very key for discoverability of your data. How are you going to manage and store and preserve and how to, you're going to share and publish? So basically good data management is key and is fundamental to the research success, if I want to put it that way. So good data management is fundamental to the research process. So it's very important that we manage the data from the start till the end. So I spoke about the sustainable development goals, right? So we do have the times, normally they call it the THE. So the times normally regulates or gives the statistics or the rankings of how universities worldwide are doing in terms of the impact in terms of sustainable development goals. So this is how universities are ranked in terms University of Nara is part of this rankings. So we are ranked based on this, the Times Higher Education. So what is Sustainable Development Goals? I think you heard about it. And so, uh, part of the theme of this webinar today is research data management and sustainable development. So for us to have sustainable cities, sustainable world, this is part of an action that we need to take to have those sustainable cities. So sustainable development goals is one of those call to action by United Nations. So we need to do this by 2030. So it's not far now. So time is ticking. So we need to make sure that we indeed speed up to those who haven't started, we need to start. So basically it's about transforming our world. So basically from us that are from Africa, we can say it's the Africa that we want. So it has 17 goals 
captivating of them. So basically, is to add, uh, if I were to give an example to alleviate poverty, to ensure partnerships. So in South, in South Africa, we taking this seriously, particularly in the University of Pretoria, we're taking this seriously. So we are making sure that our research data produced at, at the University of Pretoria and the research output should have this SDG. So basically when you are producing research or you are writing a publication, you need to indicate which sustainable development goal is your research addressing. So what is university's role when it comes to SDGs? So we have a bigger role. University of Pretoria is an intensive research institution. So basically we are contributing to the world and we are producing students that are doing or embarking on research on a daily basis to solve societal and global solutions or problems. So to bring solutions, to be innovative enough or to bring innovation ways to solve global and societal problems. So basically we are contributing in terms of knowledge, we are producing knowledge. And as you know, from the library side, we are knowledge hubs. So we are building capacity. We are doing collaboration with other universities and with other international universities and globally. So basically we are contribute, we are we, we have a bigger role to play. So from Africa side, it's very important that you are part of this and you start contributing towards this. And how do we contribute as university? Like I've mentioned, we do research. So we are research intensive university. So each and every day we are producing research that solves problems. So we oh, identify okay. the gap and we try to solve problems. We are an educational, we are part of educational sector. Or partnership, very important. So it's very important that as your university or as, you know, some said that from University of Ibadan, so that you start doing this thing so that your research have impact, not only in Ibadan or Nigeria, but in other part of the country, because you're contributing to, to the bigger picture. So like I've already mentioned, um, libraries are part of this because we are custodians of knowledge. We are the knowledge hub. So we do contribute as well towards the SDGs. So I just show, I just embedded this picture to show that this is indeed from the library as it's written the Department of Library Services from University of Pretoria. So this is part of our services. So when you go to search and it has that tab, sustainable development goals. So we help our researchers on how to identify and check and read more about uh, the sustainable development goals and be able to know what is applicable to their work and choose accordingly. So, University of Pretoria is one of the universities in, University of, in South Africa and yes, we get ranked according to THE or the Times Higher Education. So we are pleased to say we climbed higher though we're still working towards, it's work in progress and we hope we'll achieve this. So we climbed higher according to the, high, the Times Higher Education World Rankings. So, and we're still striving for more. 
so as it's written there, it says in, entrenches our position as a globally competitive university rooted work in Africa. So we are contributing towards the continent and towards the world as a whole. So this is just um, how the SDGs look and how the times ranks. So we do have 17 of them. So as an institution, you need to decide which SDGs do you support. Obviously you can't support 17 of them, but you need to check which ones you can positively contribute or and successfully contribute towards. So this is, this is our ranking for 2023. Unfortunately for 2024, it's not yet out, but for 2023, we were number 60, 69. So which we are not placed and hence we put more effort towards this so that we move higher, maybe to number two or number one, who knows? So in South Africa um, is University of Pretoria and University of Johannesburg. So your, your University of Johannesburg is doing well and we hope we'll do well as well. And at the University of Pretoria, we do have South African SDG hub. So there is a hub for SDGs that harvest all other institutions, not only University of Pretoria and other entities, not only universities, but other entities like research entities. So this is based at UP or University of Pretoria Hartfield campus. So we do have other campuses, but this one is at Hartford campus, which is the main campus of the University of Pretoria. So you can just check it more and see how it works. And again, the University of Pretoria um, launched Sustainable Development Goal Network. So we call it United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. This was launched last year during Africa Week. So hence you can see the our former vice chancellor there. So this is part of speeding up the process and achieving more. So I said at the beginning that we embedded sustainable development goals in our institutional repositories or data repository to be specific. So UP is making progress in embedding a culture of this sustainability into its institutional culture, institutional practices, and operations with meaningful contributions towards achieving the UN 2030 SDGs. So the university, again, is striving to, re, uh, to reach and drive positive societal impact, improve community engagement, and strengthen new and existing local and global partnership. So partnership is part of sustainable development goals. So it's sustainable development goal 17. So University of Pretoria do have data repository. So basically we have two repositories, institutional repository and data repository. Institutional repository is for thesis and dissertations and other creative outputs or research articles. UP data or UP research data repository feature is basically for data that underpins the thesis, the dissertation, or publication. As you know that most of the funder requirements requires that most researchers, when they're submitting for the manuscript, they need to know where the data resides and they need to submit the DOI, which is the digital object identifier, 
before the manuscript can be reviewed. So this is part of the process and for the compliance. For data sharing or data publishing, it is a collaboration space for academic research allowing UP to manage and showcase its data to the wider research community. So this is basically open for the active masters, active doctorate and its researchers, not undergraduates. So it helps the researchers to share their data so that their data can be visible can be discoverable and can be citable. So obviously you cannot cite something that you haven't seen. So this is basically a platform for data visualization and it provides metrics or stats. How is your data doing? How many people viewed your data? How many people downloaded your data and cited about it or even tweet uh, they can tweet about it or they can even blog about it. So it gives metrics about that, the social uh, metrics as well as the um, academic metrics, if you were to put it that way. So our data repository is called UP Fiction. So we don't have a name specifically, but it's called UP Fiction. So this is how it looks. And I highlighted the metrics, like I've already mentioned that it provides statistics. So as it stands currently, we do have 40163 posts, meaning the data that is published and archived on this repository. And this is the, the views and the downloads. And if you want more stuff, they can just click on more stuff and then it can give you and how many um, people viewed it and where specifically. So it gives the countries as well. So we do have research data management or RDM toolkit at UP. So this is part of the resources that we have at UP. So it's basically the videos um, educating researchers or students, what is research data management? What are the benefits of research data management and so forth? So there's another video that helps them on how to upload their data on the repository in just a few minutes. So it's just a video where to start till the end. Because we understand that we won't be there to educate everybody, but if some are visual, so when they see things then they can do them on their own. So we already embedded SDGs on this repository feature as part of the speeding up this process so that when they are submitting their data or when the researchers are submitting their data on the repository, then they can indicate which specific sustainable development goal is their research or their research data addressing. So this is just an indication, an example of a record worth the sustainable development goals. So this one, it has one sustainable development goal, but you can choose more than two, depending on the applicability. Secondly, it's a drop down menu that you can choose from. So we put all the 17 goals, then you can just choose one or two. You don't have to think what one means, what 17 means and stuff like that. Everything is written and it's in a drop down menu. So it's user friendly. Then you can just choose from, from that drop down menu. So from this fixture record, you can see is this one, it was just created last year 
and this person or this data set specifically addresses sustainable development goal number 13 which is climate action so as you know that we are suffering from climate change so this now we know that okay this contributes towards this specific problem or global problem so like i said it gives the metrics these are the usage metrics how many people downloaded and how many people are uh, viewed this data set Of the metadata is the keywords. So the data set should have the keywords as well. In line with the data, not just keywords, not South Africa, not Africa, but should be specific to the data or to the research output. So I mentioned that University of Pretoria do have two repositories. So this one is institutional repository, specifically for physicists, dissertations, and publications. The reason why I put this is because some of the universities globally or in Africa or in South Africa that are using this space, this one uses this space. So I was just giving an example to say, if you're using this space, you can still embed sustainable development goals in your repository. It doesn't mean if it's not fixed yet, then it cannot embed. So this is how it looks. Very beautiful, colorful. So on the metadata sheet or metadata form that the researcher is completing because it's self-submission. When they are submitting their thesis or when they're submitting their dissertations or the research article, then there is a mandatory field, they call it sustainable development goals. So I highlighted it here. So they can choose more than one. So it's written there to say, select SDG or SDGs that addresses your thesis or your dissertation very important so you cannot complete your submission without completing this field because as i mentioned it's compulsory so this is how we embedded sustainable development goals in both the repositories of university of Pretoria, the data repository and institutional repository so if you are using one you can embed in that institutional repository if you are using it for both the data and their thesis and dissertations or research outputs and that's my story basically i'm just encouraging all the universities or the research intensive entities to speed up the process because 2030 is just near thank you so much and these are my references Thank you so much, Rosina. I think we need to give her a round of applause for doing that and in record time too. Thank you so very much for your presentation. So we have seen what um, research data management is from the University of Pretoria angle. Um, we are encouraged to specify in our repository the sustainable development goals. That was a very great uh, presentation. So as I have said, we should note our questions. We will go straight ahead to take uh, the presentation from the next speaker, and then we will have the questions for both of them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much, Rosina, that was great. And so we move on to our next speaker. I am sure he is already waiting, ready to go. This speaker is uh, Dr. Kenneth G. Riani. And um, as a strategic ICT expert, Dr. Kenneth Goga Riani possesses a proven track record of spearheading cutting edge research, 
delivering impactful training and strategically integrating information and communication technologies, ICT, to drive organizational excellence with a particular focus on data management and governance, specializing in edtech, fintech, digital transformation, and the implementation of disruptive and emerging technologies, Dr. Riani brings a wealth of experience in optimizing resource mobilization and achieving exceptional return on investment through innovative ICT solutions, all while entering robust data management practices and governance frameworks. And towards ensuring that robust data management practices and governance frameworks are in place, Dr. Riani is a forward-thinking professional dedicated to shaping the digital landscape, fostering strategic partnerships, and empowering teams for success. Dr. Riani prioritizes the effective management and ethical governance of data assets to maximize their value and contribute to organizational success. He will be taking a look at this topic from the angle of the country Kenya. You are welcome to the podium, Dr. Kenneth Riani. A round of applause for him as he takes the stage. Welcome, sir. Kindly unmute yourself, Dr. Riani. We are ready for you. Thank you. Hello, Chair, and uh, hello, everyone, and I hope you are well. And well, I also want to appreciate Rosina. Rosina, that was a good uh, presentation. And I noticed that uh, you have really built up on that since the last meeting. And uh, maybe not to take much of your time, I will be presenting, as the chair has already highlighted, building sustainable data management framework for Kenyan research institutes in the era of big data. And ladies and gentlemen, my presentation will be summarized in nine key slides. We will do the introduction, probably also walk uh, the members through the challenges that we have experienced in Kenya, the research objectives, and why exactly we decided to do this uh, study the approach that we used in this study and the summary and findings and conclusions that we did get, and also the proposed framework of what exactly we came up with. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, we want to agree that in Kenya, just like in the entire world, research institutes are encountering data-related hurdles as research becomes increasingly data-driven. And we also know that big data, the compounding effect that big data has been bringing into research and also bringing into the collection of data, related storage, how we analyze data and how we are sharing the data. So based on this, there was a call for us to see how we can be able to get a data management framework that is actually sustainable, that actually is purpose-driven and meets uh, the requirements of the people collecting data. So this presentation will propose a comprehensive framework covering the data collection, how we store it, how we analyze, how we share it, and we'll also be very particular on the data privacy legal compliance and ethics. We have noted uh, with concern that again, as we, we store data, we collect data, there are challenges that we have been experiencing. Dr. Kenneth, so the, um, a moment. Yes. Are, are you able to put the slides in presentation mode? Okay, uh, one second. One second, let me just go back there.
Okay, is that better? Perfect, thank you. Ah, uh, Great, thank you. So as I was saying that uh, there are challenges we have been experiencing in the whole range of collecting data, how we collect data and the genesis is we have been receiving a lot of uh, requests, how we handle medical data at the Kenya Medical Training College, how we handle data from various government entities, for example, the Kenya Forestry Research Institute, the Kenya Medical Research Institute, and, and the majority of them have been receiving a lot of data, which also have the aspect of uh, the human elements, the personal identifiable data. And that said, we note that the volume is becoming, the data is coming from various sources. The, the variety from text to data to images, we are receiving a lot of uh, that with technology. We also note that the velocity is also very keen, ensuring that we get the real-time real data and we process it real-time. So of course, this also comes with storage challenges, how we accommodate our infrastructure as a government entity, how we handle uh, and how we accommodate the big data. If at all we want to work with uh, cloud providers such as the Google, such as uh, Amazon Web Services, or even Oracle Cloud. And again, with this comes the issue of cost. Because uh, when we have, when you bring on board other vendors, such as uh, the Google Clouds and the Amazons, the cost is normally very high. We also look at issues such as how we are analyzing this data. We get the data, but how do we derive meaningful insights from this data? And again, the resource requirements, if you are doing something like artificial intelligence and you're doing something like machine learning, the computational resources is really high. There's also the issue of uh, security and sharing. What do you share and what do you, as you collaborate with other partners, how do you protect the confidentiality as well as the data integrity? And again, we also have the impact of big data. How do we manage to address the challenge of data overload? You have so much data that when you try to generate meaningful insights from the data and how you analyze it becomes a challenge. Again, also the resource intensity, so how do we keep up with the advanced infrastructure? As infrastructure goes, grows, as tools and expertise grows, how do we handle that? Therefore, that said, our study was had one general research objective that we needed to design, develop, and propose a sustainable data management framework for the Kenyan research institutes with a focus to address the challenges that are posed by big data and the data-driven research. So to be more specific, we had six objectives. We investigate the data management practices within the Kenyan institutes. We design an adaptable and suitable DMF to address the needs that we had uh, picked in objective one. We also consider ethical considerations and legal requirements, both from the global angle to the regional and as well as uh, the local and industry level. Additionally, we also looked at robust data security features that we could propose and how we collaborate between the various research institutes. Kenya has about 30 research institutes that are registered with the NACOSTI. That is the national, uh, the national research institute that regulates all the so bodies. Let me come down for that, sir. And then we also propose capacity building initiatives that equip researchers and data managers with a specific skill set to operate the framework. So why exactly do we feel the need of the study? We were keen on looking at advancing research and innovation and bridging the knowledge gap. 
We also strive to enhance data privacy and security, and also look at collaborative research and global partnerships. So in summary, our research methodology cut across, was a mixed method research. It cut across the data collection by use of surveys and interviews, document analysis, collaborative workshops, and expert consultations. Under analysis, we looked at thematic, we looked at uh, quantitative and comparative, the pattern recognitions, data coding, and also stakeholder perspectives. There were two theories that were leveraged on, the UT, UT and the technology acceptance model. We did an empirical review, look, just looking at the global and regional and local perspective of the challenges that are being experienced. And then that is when we developed the framework, looking at the data analysis insights, the stakeholder engagements, the component refinement, all the way to the iterative refinement. We had validation and inter iteration, use of expert reviews. We did a pilot test in one of the organizations. And also we looked at the stakeholder feedback just to make sure that it was fit for purpose. Under ethical considerations, amongst the many we looked at, the key ones were the General Data Protection Regulation and the Kenya Data Protection Act of 2019. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our findings were as follows. Under the strengths, we noted that ideally, localized data governance was a strength because uh, majority in the country tended to use the, the policies that were in existence. There was also robust data collection protocols within the research institutes that we talked to and the adoption of open science principles. When we look at the weaknesses, the three key weaknesses that we saw was one, fragmented data storage systems. Each entity had its own processes and at its own systems. And additionally, each department tended to use one and not the other. We had inadequate data documentation practices and inconsistent adoption of metadata standards. So it was very, it was not really easy to determine which data belongs to who and how they have been handled. Areas of consideration based on the challenges that we saw, we proposed the areas of considerations when developing the DMF. We noted that there was significance on customization. You could have a DMF, but the people who are using it cannot be able to customize it. So there was a call to have most of these frameworks to be open source and to be able to be to be customized accordingly. There was also concern on scalability in terms of storage infrastructure was a consideration. There was integration of analytical tools such that when you have your data, you should be able to move it from one analytical tool to the other without losing the context and the meaning of the data. Embracing global trends. And there was also a a suggestion that the DMF should be able to embrace to embrace more, more of the global trends. There was importance of uh, capacity building within the local community, and of course, continuous evaluation and adaptation of the, the DMF. Under ethical considerations and legal requirements, the one that really stood out was uh, informed consent mechanisms. We noted that most studies, there was no informed consent. Also areas to do with data ownership and rights also stood out. We noted also in terms of safeguarding the PIN, the personally identifiable and sensitive data, and also aligning with global protection regulations, and also the continuous evaluation of the framework. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I wind up, after 
all the data and consolidation. This is a framework that we came up with, starting from the data governance policies, how you prepare your data governance policies before you even start collecting data, how exactly you plan and document and what you look out for, how you handle your storage and infrastructure. Then you look at data security and access control. Then we look at the data quality assurance with number six, looking at the metadata standards. We move to how we will share the data and collaborate. Also with number eight, looking at the long-term preservation, the training and support, legal compliance, monitoring and evaluation. Then we finalize with the how we archive and we dispose the data from the system. Again, also for purposes of time, I would have really wished to walk you through what each and every step you need to look out for, but for purposes of time, we will also be guided by the chair on how to share the same. So thank you everyone for listening and uh, over back to you chair, thank you. Thank you so very much for this uh, rousing presentation. A round of applause for Dr. Riani. This is um, RDM from the Kenya perspective. And he went uh, on to even give us a, a, a study of what they have done, what they have found out, what is a round of applause. Thank you very much. And for making it brief. Thank you so much for making it brief. I would also want to say that um, the slides will be shared with everybody. And um, insofar as you had registered and we have your details, you will get um, the recording of this webinar. So straight on, we will now go on to question time. If you have questions for any of the speakers, either Ms. Rosina or Dr. Riani on um, their presentation, Dr. Rosina who gave it from the perspective of South Africa and Dr. Riani who has given it to us from the perspective of Kenya, please indicate by raising your hand and you will be allowed to ask your question. Question time will just be 10 minutes um, or 15 minutes, let's say, because we, we still have some, we still have some time that uh, we caught up on. And so we ask you to raise your hand if you have questions. Thank you so much. reactions from the audience. If you have a question, I think you can unmute yourself after indicating that you have a question or a comment. Unmute yourself if you have a question, raise your hand. Or you can you can actually drop your question in. The Hello. Yes, please. Please go ahead. You have a question. Go ahead and ask it, Dylan. Okay. Uh, my. Okay, my question is uh is directed to Rosina. I wanted to ask what strategies are uh, are being used at UP for researchers to deposit their research data in the USP space because it seems like uh, uh, populated. So I just want to enter the research data. Could you repeat that question? You, your question has to do with this space and it is directed at Rosina. Rosina, did you yes. get the question? 
not yet. Yes. I think she spoke about two repositories, and I heard about the strategy. Can, Maybe if she, yeah, okay. she was just yeah, she ahead, wasn't then. audible enough. Then if I can get the question so that I can answer, thank you. Okay. Okay. Can um, am I audible now? Yes, yes you are okay. audible. All right. Okay. Hey, I was asking uh, the strategies that are being used for researchers to deposit their research data in There seems to be some network interference. Perhaps you could type the question in the chat and we will pick it from there, please. There is interruption and we can hardly hear your question. Please drop your question in the chat. Thank you. If we have other questions, please raise your hand if you have a question and you will be called upon to ask it or drop your question in the chat box. Thank you. All right, we have Hawa Adeleke Maruf. Please ask your question or mute yourself. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the wonderful presentations. My question goes to um, Madam Rosina. Please, can you uh, give us more explanation or can you provide expansiate on the relationship between research data management and institutional repository as um, i have a different views um, about research data management and institutional repository please i would like you to to expatiate on the relationship and probably the difference between the two. Thank you. The, the difference, okay. Um, right. This question is for Rosina and yes, please. Is it Hawa, right? Yes. Okay, Hawa. Um, let me explain it this way. Let me just um, outline it clearly. We do have two repositories at UP, but in some instances, other universities can afford one. So at UP, we do have two repositories. One is institutional or UP space. We call it UP space, mainly for thesis dissertations and research articles or publications. That's where they're depositing their thesis final PDF thesis, dissertations, and research articles. And we do have Fixture. Fixture is a data repository where they deposit only data or data set that underpins the thesis or the dissertations or the research articles. So let's say the, in the institution can only afford one. The reason why I, I spoke about two is because some of the institutions, they use one and it's under, uh, they use this space. So institutional repository, UP space is using this space. That's the software that we are using, this space, right? So some of the institutions, they use the institutional repository as both the research data repository, as well as for thesis dissertations and for publications. So there's not much of a difference. It depends how you use your institutional repository and what do you do with it. I think, I, I hope I answered your question. Thank you very much, uh, Rosina. Um, how are, I hope that satisfies your uh, curiosity there. Um, we have a question from Nixon from Uganda. 
and his question goes to Dr. Kenneth. How are research organizations in Kenya utilizing the National Research Education Network in terms of data storage, security, and collaboration? Dr. Riani, are you there? Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Nixon, for your question. And uh, for us in Kenya, we use uh, the Kenya National Research Education Network. It's more of their NREN for Kenya. And KNET, uh, first, it ensures that most, if not all, research institutions are members. Then they provide uh, internet at discounted prices. They also they also provide us with uh, with services for analyzing data, actually virtualization of data. They provide resources. Additionally, they are always running uh, they are always running competitions for sponsorship for researchers, and they also rank researchers based on uh, web metrics and Scopus index. So it is a fully fledged and they have special interest groups. So it is fully fledged and it is akin to the National Research Fund in South Africa. So they additionally also fund researches. But thank you, Nixon. And for more information, I would request that you look at kenet.or.ke. I, I will type that on the group for you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, um, kenneth.or.ke. I think um, you should just drop that, as you said, on the network. Now for Rosina, there's a question. Is the de data repository linked to the institutional repository? Correct. Uh, our systems are integrated. So when you are submitting your data on Fiction, you get DOI or Digital Object Identifier as a proof of data submission, which you need to put under mandatory field on UP space. So you cannot complete UP space or this UP space submission without the DOI. So this is how we integrated our systems. So you need that UI to be able to complete your submission on UP space, which is institutional repository. So many we link the two. When you submit the data, you get a DOI. When you submit your thesis, you get a, a handle. We call it a handle as a proof of submission of your thesis. And on both repositories, on the data repository, we have your handle and it's linked with the UI on the UP space, you get the handle and it's linked with the DOI. So the systems are integrated and they talk to each other. Okay, hello. Um, Rosina, we seem to have lost you. I hope everybody else can still hear me. Yes, uh, I can hear you. Can you hear um, me? There is a question. Oh, good. I can hear you now. Right. Um, that's Thank Rosina. You. There is a question that was asked by Rosina a while, I'm sorry, by Dylas a while ago. She wants to know what strategies are being used at the University of Pretoria for researchers to be willing to deposit their research data in the UP space. Uh, like what they're do not you to clarify, to can you hear me? To clarify, they're not really willing. Yes, <laughs> they're not willing, but we put the policies and the guidelines in place. So we do have research policy, we do have research compliance policy, we do have the RDM guideline. So that is compulsory. <laughs> so when you're submitting your thesis, that should have data that underpins your thesis. So, and that's how we integrated the system. So you need to put 
Okay, so it's policies in place. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah, you need to put policies in place. You need to put the guidelines. So it's not really that they are willing, but they are compelled because of the policies. Okay. All right, thank you. Now Boniface asked, uh, dropped a question. He said, how can one use research data to take action, especially research that has been sponsored? I don't get the question. What do you mean uh, take it and then? Can you please elaborate on the question? If the if, if... I think the question is how can one use research data management to take to research data to take action, especially research that has been sponsored? You know, you have people whose research has been sponsored, and probably maybe the sponsors have uh, some specifications on what to A do clause. or not. All right. Yes. Yes. This is, hence I, I already mentioned about the policies. So on the policy, you need to state um, those clauses. So there are some too sensitive data that cannot be shared or data cannot be shared because of funder requirements. Those fall under funder requirements. So when you're doing data management plan okay. at the beginning of your of your research, that should be stipulated to say on the data sharing, I cannot share my data because of the data or the contractual agreements or the funder requirements. So that comes with a disclaimer letter in the library when they're submitting their thesis. So that disclaimer letter is just to confirm that that specific research cannot be shared due to one, two, three reasons and the attachment of that contractual agreement. Thank you. Now this question is for Kenneth. He says, can other institutions outside Kenya also join as an affiliate on NENET? Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for the question. I do know that KNET has uh, affiliations and they work with uh, with other entities in the country. So what I'm going to do, Chair, if you do allow, I will put the contact of the executive director here mm -hmm. so that they can be able to pick that conversation with the right person. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, these next two questions are for Rusina. Um, Nixon further asks if the data sets for the SDGs are public or do they involve monetary engagements from the data sources? And another question from Olanike Alabi is, what RDM tools are you utilizing at the University of Pretoria? How do you handle data sharing hesitancy among researchers? Oh, she has answered that already. They are compelled to by a university-wide policy. Okay, so are the data sets for the SDGs public or do they involve monetary engagements from the data sources? Hello? Um, we do have two options on the data repository. So data can be public or data can be embargoed. I think the librarians know about this uh, term, but basically when we say embargo, we mean data can be, uh, the access to the data can be delayed. That's what we mean when we say embargo. So whatever that we publish on the data repository is public depending if it has an embargo or not. So if it has an embargo, it means the metadata will be open, but the files or the data itself is closed due to several reasons. Maybe you're still busy registering a patent. Maybe you're still busy um, um, with the publication. So there are several reasons for that. So basically, if they say they're public, it means they're public because we are adhering to other international standards like 
uh, fair, fair principles, meaning the data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. That's the main aim we're doing re research data management. We minimize du uh, the duplication of efforts. So I cannot do the same thing that we did and get the same results. So, but I can do further exploration on what, uh, uh, on what you received on all on your results, basically on your findings. Okay, thank you. Um, a hand was raised up, Emily Ungeno. Please um, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Emily, are you still there? Please ask your question. We cannot hear you on mute. Okay, you, you are unmuted. Please ask your question. Okay, while um, Emily is probably battling with the network, do we have any more questions? If we don't, then we go into the final uh, portion of today's uh, webinar. Hello, Emily, are you there? You had a question? Please ask your question. Okay. In the absence of other questions, I hope um, Dr. Ndlovu is on hand to give us um, a briefing on how you can publish in iAssist IQ, that is the iAssist quarterly. Mr. Philip Ndlovu is an accomplished librarian holding a Bachelor of Science degree in Library and Information Science and a Master of Science in Library and Information Science. With his extensive education and expertise, he has made significant contributions to the library field. Currently, Mr. Ndlovu serves as the acting librarian at Gwanda State University, a position he has held since January 2022. In this role, he is responsible for managing and overseeing the university library's resources and operations. He is a member of several professional associations and also works as the I Assist Quarterly Journal Managing Editor. We invite the managing editor of the I Assist Quarterly Journal to give us a presentation on how you can publish in IQ. Over to you, Mr. Philip Ndlov. Kindly welcome him. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so I am going to talk about publishing with e-assists and I'm not going to take much time explaining this. But let me start off by saying that um, e-assist quarterly is actually uh, a peer-reviewed indexed open access quarterly publication of articles dealing with social science information and data services including relevant societal, legal, and ethical issues. So ESIST quarterly actually represents an international cooperative effort on the part of individuals managing, operating, or using machine-readable data archives, data libraries, and data services. So if you have anything that you are researching on, Perhaps which is related to the production, acquisition, preservation, processing, distribution, and use of machine readable data, then ESC quarterly can be a right uh, journal for you to publish your research activities. So the there are a number of uh, things that you can publish with uh, ESC quarterly. It could be 
research articles, publication studies, sometimes reviews, and sometimes uh, reports. So what can you do if you want to submit an article with uh, assist quarterly? Well, the first port of call would be for you to visit the eassistquarterly.com website. And uh, if you are going to submit an article, uh, first of all, you have to upload your paper on the ACU website, uh, uh, which is an open journal system supported by the University of Alberta. So if you are not registered on the website, we encourage you to do that first. And when you register, you are then, uh, you are going to be asked probably to enter your title, abstract keywords and authors and so forth. So detailed instructions on how to do this are actually available on the ERCSquarterly.com uh, website. So I really enjoyed the presentation from Dr. Kenneth Olga Riani. So if you haven't published yet, probably you can also consider publishing with uh, ERCS Quarterly. I think with these brief words, I think I've just talked about how you can go about publishing with IQ. And I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Philip Ndlovu. That was very good. A uh, round of applause for him for that introduction to the I Assist Quarterly. I can confirm that the I Assist Quarterly is highly peer reviewed and um, I assist receives and accepts very, very high quality papers. Your papers are welcome. And so we have technically come to the end of today's presentation. When we started, the secretary, Ms. Winnie, told us of the activities of I assist. We also say that you should join the I assist Africa chapter and also participate in the I assist global activities. We have a lot of them lined up. Also expect the recording of this webinar in the next one week or two. I think I'm correct uh, about that. Once you had registered to um, get into this webinar, you will be contacted definitely. And so we say thank you very much for your participation. Um, webinar, webinar secretariat, are we going to take a snapshot? Hello, Winnie. Yes, please. Maybe people should turn on their videos briefly. <laughs> please turn on your videos briefly, just briefly so we can take snapshots of everybody. Put on your smiles. Let's take page by page. Let's say page one, mm -hmm. page yeah. two, because we are so many nice here. I think. Over 100. <laughs> so say cheese, everybody's cheese. Cheese. You can unmute now cheese. and say your hello. Hello. So we do. Hi, Winnie. <laughs> Hi, Rosina. Nice seeing everyone. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hello, East everyone. Beautiful faces here today. Hello, everyone. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much, uh, Dr. Adetor, Rosina, Dr. Kenneth, and all the participants. Hello. We look forward to seeing you okay. in, in Nairobi. Uh, beautiful faces. Okay, cheers. For the next. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Of our videos now, and remember to register for the next I assist conference coming up very shortly in in Kenya. <sighs> Am I right? Where? So see you all in Kenya very soon. Okay. Thank you so much, Cheers. Kenya. Okay. Nairobi. Bye. I'm sure we do that details. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Yes. Um. Bye -bye. Everybody. Bye -bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.